How you doing, everybody? Uh, my name is Timothy Trespass, and I am a targeted individual. Uh, for those of you who don't know what a targeted individual is, it is a person like myself who has been chosen to undergo extrajudicial human experimentation, experimentation into mind control via MK Ultra like uh, covert druggings, remote neural monitoring infection with Morgellons at an accelerated rate, exposure to chemtrails, gang stalking, toxins, poison, and of course, the ubiquitous mind control. Excuse me. Um, whenever I talk about this, I have a panic reaction, post-traumatic stress reaction because of all the trauma that we've undergone. Um, what I wanted to talk to you tonight about is insomnia, <laughs> sleep deprivation, and uh, the resulting psychosis that comes from it. <clears throat> um, before this targeting took on its full-scale uh, program, before it became mind-blowing, uh, I used to sleep fine. I slept like a baby. I would get my eight hours of sleep. I could do with less. Uh, occasionally I would take medication in order to work long and hard hours. But I slept like everybody, a normal person. Um, recently, since the this traumatic experience of, of uh, being tortured and tormented and finding out that in fact we were targeted and undergoing uh, insane uh, genetic, you know, I don't know, once you have more gallons and you're exposed to these chemtrail, bio, nano machines, you undergo, your body undergoes a change and you have these things living inside of you and building things inside of you. I don't know how it's done, <clears throat> the sleep deprivation, the, the insomnia, because now I do not sleep unless I take medication. Um, let me say this again. Now, I do not sleep unless I have medication. And what this means is that I can be up for days and days, and weeks, you know. Um, unfortunately, after about one day without sleep, you get grumpy and cranky and emotionally label. You, you uh, have a hard time restraining yourself from getting angry or frustrated or sad things affect you more deeply uh, you make decisions less rationally and um, you find that you're generally frustrated uh, after two days of sleep deprivation all of the things that I just said are increased uh, many fold and you begin to see little spots and dots and things in your vision after uh, approximately 72 hours of sleep deprivation, all of the things that I said are uh, exponentially true, plus you begin to become psychotic. And if it continues, you can have a psychotic break. Uh, this is a fact. We know this. For human beings, they need sleep. It is required to rebuild your body. It is required for your subconscious to integrate with your conscious is required uh, there are a few people in the world that don't require sleep uh, how they live I don't know usually they claim they get a few naps here and there a few hours um, what I do is I take medication over the counter medication or doctor prescribed medication in order to get some sleep because <clears throat> Even medicated sleep, sleep that is not fully REM sleep, it, it does enough to satisfy some of the needs that your body has. However, as I look at myself, as this disease progresses, as the stress progresses, as the remote neural connectivity continues, and the subconscious programming, the suicide programming, the blah, 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 
oyster skull, they call it, but it's part of remote neural connection. Um, as that continues, I've watched myself denigrate, degrade. My health has declined. I have my beard has turned white. I have these deep wrinkles under my eyes and dark blue blood pooling under my eyes from the small capillaries that burst when you don't sleep. And um, I'm aging. Uh, I was reading about Mark Ellens yesterday on the Capricorn Institute website. This man has done a great deal of research since 1999 about Mark Ellens and uh, is actually breaking down some of the chemical and biochemical processes that this syndrome of man-made biological weapon, uh, what it does to your body, how it interacts, how it takes energy from your body, how it uses uh, the iron, the ferrous two iron extracted from your hemoglobin in order to create ferrous three iron that it, like a bacteria, can use as energy transfer mechanism. And he figures out exactly how many joules of energy it, it drains from your body in order to do this process. He goes through the entire thing in his thesis. Um, he shows a great deal of evidence about the structures that are being built and, and he postulates on many of the I don't know, I, I recommend reading this stuff. I, I've only begun to glance at it. Um, for those of you who don't know what Mark Ellens is, uh, I suggest you Google it. Uh, it is a man-made syndrome where uh, combining the three groups, the three branches of life, uh, functions from the three branches of life into a single organism or instruction set. Uh, I believe that it's nanotechnology. However, it's either life or it mimics life. It has instruction sets using DNA or GNA um, and it builds fibrous, silicon based fibrous things. It, it seems to have a, a nanotubule delivery system that contains uh, a payload that is then delivered. Uh, it also resembles some sort of a mold spores that grow inside of your body. It tends to break apart the red blood cells and the hemoglobin carries less oxygen. And these fungal type growths begin to grow in the bloodstream. Um, it's a very interesting bit of technology. And if some of the research that I've been seeing is correct about the, the things that it's building, gold deposits and silicon and uh, crystalline structures. Those of us who know basic electronics, if you google crystal radio, uh, back in the days when I was a child and before World War I, uh, so there was crystal radios. You could build a radio, you can still do it, out of uh, a razor blade and uh, a piece of uh, graphite from a pencil, uh, you know, bits of wire, and aluminum foil, wax paper, a pair of high impedance headphones, and a long antenna. Um, basically, each of these things has uh, electrical properties that resemble uh, capacitors, uh, resistors, diodes, etc. And you can actually build an AM receiver using parts like this. <clears throat> uh, there's models and, and circuits that you can find online. So what that tells me is that all crystals, um, crystals vibrate um, when you put energy into them. It's piezoelectric they vibrate at a certain frequency. And um, this guy at Capricorn, he actually talks about frequency dependent reactions. Uh, continuing from the previous video. Um, anyway, if it's true, in fact, that Mark Ellens is building silicon based structures, carbon based structures, and uh, metal based structures, and crystalline structures inside of our bodies, then it is possible and probable 
that these components that it's building at the Morgellons nanites or pseudo life is building inside of us are components of a radio system a resonating radio system um, in order to have remote neural connectivity you need a two-way reactionary radio you need a uh, a radio that resonates on the target end the receiving end uh, when you energize it <clears throat> it would have to give you back a certain frequency signal that you could lock on to and then as you modulate your transmission you would be receiving the interferometry output of the target human being since human beings are, are bioelectrical since our brains are neuroelectrical bioelectrical and biochemical uh, but they produce an electric electromagnetic field that is measurable from a great distance away using technology that reduces the signal to noise uh, increases the signal to noise ratio um, the heart also is the strongest electromagnetic component of the body so combining these two electromagnetic outputs and inserting into the human system um, piezoelectric and uh, electronic semiconductor type components that are reactive to microwave energy at particular frequencies or possibly a near infrared or, or a combination of signals um, this is a system that draws energy from the host in a parasitic fashion and once you get the receiver to resonate in other words to receive the energy that you're transmitting bounce it around inside of itself in a way that increases its signal rather than canceling it out although some of the canceling out this is the interferometry the return signal would be <coughs> excuse me um, some sort of waveform uh, that would be changing dynamically as the transmitter is transmitting the neural code to the target and the target's brain is transmitting its output its neurological function output which is being received by the transmitter and the transmitter using strong AI quantum computing possibly is able to in real time faster than your neurons can fire because we know that quantum computing and strong artificial intelligence even in regular uh, supercomputing is fast enough to receive the neuro neuro neurological interferometry output signal the, the break the code you know match it against existing uh, data so that it knows what the data is separating it into optical data vocal data thought data emotional data biological data uh, biometric biological data etc um, tactile data uh, conscious data, subconscious data, audio data, uh, etc. Splitting it up into streams shouldn't be that hard because uh, if you've broken the code, then you know you know what each of these streams are, and also the different parts of the brain would have different uh, field strength intensities because of the, the depth of penetration, and all these things can be calculated. So this system is highly dynamic. Uh, in that it locks onto its target, resonates with the target, um, energizes the target, and reads the return from the target. So far we're talking about plain old radar, interferometry radar, maybe uh, uh, three-dimensional radar, um, but uh, this is a, a two-way flowing communication adaptive system where the transmitter is always receiving data from the target's brain as the neurological conditions change is analyzing that data breaking it down and then making decisions based on programs what to do if etc etc uh, and this is controlled by a, a controller a person 
you know, how the interface is set up, I, I can only imagine. Uh, if you imagine, uh, you know, Photoshop for emotions, or Photoshop for biometric data, where you can take different emotional states and layer them over each other and shift between them. Anyway, this is just my theories on, on how this remote neural connectivity in targeted individuals in mind control works. Um, my theory about the, the, the way it influences you. Now, uh, l let's just say for a minute that, uh, that I'm correct that everybody in the country and possibly in the world has been infected with Mark Allen's nanotechnology sprayed by our government. And this nanotechnology has been over time building its system into the human body, uh, possibly changing the genome structure, I don't know, building itself into the body. And as people get a certain level of infection and a certain length of time with this nanotechnology Mark Allen's inside of them to build these structures then eventually they will come online one after another and I guess the computer could be sweeping and scanning for this I mean there are so many sources of, of external uh, electromagnetic radiation we're blanketed in microwave radiation from from cellular systems 3g uh, 4g it, it blankets the world more than half the earth population has a cell phone so the coverage blankets almost every populated area of the world which means we're bathed in this constantly modulating field of microwave radiation now it is true that the CDMA and TDMA uh, multiple division access um, systems that are used to to put multiple conversations into one data stream and break them apart again that these codecs in and of themselves the way they have been constructed can be used by simply slipping some bits around in the bit stream to modulate a particular rhythm uh, of microwave pulses that could be used for brainwave entrainment or active denial system uh, befuddling, befogging the brain with pulsed microwaves. Now we know this is a fact because we've seen these weapons in operation and, and if you google them, you know, active denial system, you'll see plenty of pictures of the government showing you this. However, these, these, excuse me, these pulsed microwave modulations can also be emanating from other sources, from satellite television, from cellular phones. Um, in fact, if you were uh, serious about global mind control, you would even, uh, I gotta get a tripod, you would even be able to modulate the power grid itself to uh, cause uh, befuddlement and action. This is, this is really ridiculous. Um, I'm going to have to find a much better way of, of doing this. Because... <laughs> Alright. Anyway, uh, you can see the kind of things that are, are going through my mind. Uh, a lot of it sounds like paranoid schizophrenia. However, this is not the case. Um, it's that I'm highly intelligent and that I have been targeted, tortured, drugged, gang-stalked, followed, poisoned, irradiated. I've had uh, strange biological entities shooting out of my body. I've had... I mean, the list goes on and on and on. I've been coated in smart dust. I've been irradiated with electromagnetic energy and microwaves and God knows what else they've done to us. They drugged us every day with aerosolized, weaponized, hallucinogenic drugs and misted our room with chemtrail chemicals to see in an accelerated version of what happens to everybody else. And they're using the remote neural connectivity, you know, to control our minds. Oh, here's how it works. This inner dialogue, when you're thinking to yourself,
There's a voice in your head that talks to you, and it's your voice. It's the voice in your mind. And you're used to that voice because you've been talking with it your whole life. However, with remote neural connectivity, that voice can be imitated, excuse me, imitated, and come from an external source. In other words, sometimes your thoughts may not be your own. Sometimes the choices you make based on those thoughts and your emotional state behind those thoughts may be influenced externally. How else can I say it? The reason I know this is because they told me sometimes your thoughts aren't your own and and I didn't want to believe that for a while and then one day I was watching He-Man and somebody yelled in my head fucking He-Man I hate that show it is so fucking gay and of course then they proceeded to hack my system so that I could no longer watch He-Man on Hulu for about three months but it dawned on me in that instant 